Hi, welcome to Jackie Rom Investigates. And yes, I am Jackie Rom. And I've had the best time over the last few weeks chatting to all different people around the world. Ordinary people with extraordinary lives. And just finding out all about them and maybe they'd end up as a character in a book. I've also learned some new skills. Uh, makeup, well they're not new, but makeup, hair, costume, lighting, directing, editing it's been amazing so uh, let's go over and see who the guest is today so hi anthony how are you i'm good thank you you all right jackie yeah i'm good thanks thank so you. much for agreeing to have a chat That's what right. i want to do if you don't mind i yeah. got because of what i do i've got people that know me all around the world right. and though everyone in the uk knows who you are that may not be the same kind of worldwide. So could you just quickly tell people what you do? What you've done? Uh, well, quick. yeah, I mean, worldwide, I was in a band called Blue. Um, we did have success worldwide um, in Asia um, and Europe and Italy and stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I've, I've just always sung, always acted. And I'm just I'm just me. I'm just a Northwest London boy that's done all right. So te let's go back to the beginning. Yeah. So when, at what age we, did you like to get on the stage or show off or whatever yeah. you did? Um, well, if you speak to my mum, I think I was about four and I used to do a lot of um, a lot of impressions and stuff when I was a kid. So I loved, I loved mimicking people. And then, um, <clears throat> excuse me, and then as I got older, the acting and drama just took over me and... I just got the bug for it. And my first school production was uh, Cabaret and I played the MC. And my old agent at the time came and saw me and she sort of signed me up there and then. Her name was um, Sharon Harris, who uh, she was, she just, you know, she guided me and helped me. Then I did a few TV shows and then <clears throat> my voice started breaking. So I was... Oh, even though I was like a teenager, 13, 14, I was too old to go for like 11 year old parts and I was too young to go for 15 year old parts. So I was in that mixed, mixed aged. So once my voice started breaking, I went to vocal lessons just to brush up on my singing and then singing took over. And then I started gigging all around North London, North West London, Essex, just learning my trades, you know, singing in pubs and clubs. And, and that's how I learned my apprenticeship. Do you know, most people don't realise what people go through before they make it. You yeah. know, people think everything comes fast, but we, we all of us work hard to, to hone our trade. Yeah. Do you go to theatre school as well? I, or just? No, I went to normal school and I went to drama classes. So Sharon, at the time, she had drama classes every Thursday. I used to go with mum uh, to, to Wembley, uh, me and my sister at the time, my little brother. And yeah, I just I just caught the bug. I just absolutely loved every minute of it. I love learning. I'm always learning. I'm still learning to, to this day. So I think you've got to do something you love, and if you and if you pursue it and you love it, then 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 go for it. Follow your dreams. Yeah, do you know that's so important, isn't it? And I've said this before. Anyone that wants to be a performer, it's in here. Yeah. It's you just can't. It, sometimes you can't even explain it, can you? <laughs> Because, as you said, Jackie, you know, it's embedded in you. And I've always loved musical theatre. I've always loved theatre. And just to just to be able to perform on stage, even for like three minutes or 30 minutes, it's just the best feeling in the world. Because you're entertaining people. If people go home with a smile on their face that they have enjoyed your performance, that, to me, means everything. What was, the first, what was it like the first time you walked into an arena? Well, it was Wembley Arena, and oh, let's a small one then to small start. One. So my first experience in an arena, which was quite surreal, because from the age of like eleven till I was fourteen, I used to help my dad and my uncle out in Wembley Market, you know, selling. And five years after that, I'm performing on that stage. So it really held had had, had held me in good stead because family wise, they they. They nurtured me. They kept me, you know, not to get too big-headed, and they kept they kept me um, they kept me sane. 
It was amazing. It was a great experience. And how did you sort of, I mean, Blue had the most amazing impact and they were huge and right. they and, and they were adored. Okay. How do you suddenly go from that adoration to then taking the next step, whatever the step is? I think you've got to move with the times. I think you've got to, you know, we, we, me and the boys started the old way. You know, we, we grafted, we, we built our fan base. We, we got signed. We went to the studio, we released. And I think you have to move with the times. And I think we were so hungry for success that we were so into the music. And when you're into the music, you've got to move with the times. And unfortunately, when we called it a day back in 05, we there was indie bands coming through. There was like rocky bands coming through with guitars and who were great musicians, but there was no call for a boy band. So I think one thing that we we never did was we never we never kept it we never kept pursuing it because there was always call for a boy band. You know there was always a, a gig to be had, but we just we just called it a day and then you know obviously five years later we got back together. What was that like getting going out into a large audience again after after that? Um, yeah, well, go. It was it was the Eurovision, our first performance back. So you know, oh, small audience, small then. audience, twenty six million around wide. Um, enjoy it. But that was our comeback. That was a great experience, and uh, you know, I, I love the I love the Eurovision. I think it's hilarious. I think it's fun. Uh, the UK and it was never a good gonna win song it. as well. Thank you, Jackie. The UK never going to win it, but that wasn't why we did yeah. it. We wanted to do it to re represent our country, and we wanted to show people that we were back. And from that, it just went from strength to strength. Brilliant. And what are you? Ed? How are you coping in the lockdown? Is it, are you, and you've I got mean, young children as well. Yeah. So homeschooling? Yes, homeschooling and just trying to keep sane. Um, I've just ordered some uh, music equipment just now. That's who I was on the phone to when you called me, um, to Simon, because I'm gonna, just going to start writing and, and get my head around things and, you know, for, for your brain, to, for your mind to be working solid. You've, you've got to keep active. And that's not something I haven't done because I'm lazy. I've just just got down because of this lockdown and obviously people dying and it's just so upsetting it, 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 I've, one thing I have learned that the mind is so powerful yeah that's why we're doing so quizzes powerful. every night that's why we're doing quizzes every night because just to do something to, to make my brain work because you know I'm sitting at home watching TV I, it just, I just get brain dead I just feel numb and just feel like oh. and you don't know what day it is no, I must say, once I decided to do this project, it's, it's been like completely all consuming. Great. Just to Which have. Which is amazing. Yeah. So how are you finding it? Um, I miss a couple of things which are really simple. Um, I miss human contact, and oh. I've come to stay with my mum because my mum's eighty-five and she can't go anywhere and do anything. So I've come to stay here. So I'm literally in one room. So having this project is brilliant because it's given right. me I, i've spoken to so many incredible people but i want a curry you can you can order one now you know i know it's not the same no. do you know what i mean you want to go out and have a curry and i just want to give someone a hug i can't wait the oh, next door no. neighbor's going to get a hug when i walk out where, where, where about you face jackie i I'm mean asking. well i move around but uh i write in the caribbean but oh, i'm no. here it's locked down i can't get there um, but I'm in Romford at the moment. Romford to the Caribbean. And Mersey Island. I've got a place out in Mersey as well, so I kind of oh, really? move around. Is that nice there? Love Mersey. Really lovely. It's very trendy. It's all right if you eat oysters and posh fish and chips. And it has one road on, only one road, and it's tidal. So twice a day you can't get on the island. The tide literally covers it. That is amazing. Is it expensive yeah. over there? Like, no. 
it's, probably, it's not far from Clacton, Colchester, yeah. Clacton, all that area. So it's great for the kids. It's really good. Yeah. Anyway, right. back back to you. Sorry, yeah, go on. No, no, it's all right. So, um, but songwriting something you've always done, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I've always done since I was eighteen. So, you know, I lost the love for it a little bit because I, I just never had the time. I, my, my time was consumed by a lot of musical theatre and a lot of acting. But it's nice to to come back to it and and just as I said, just get your mind grafted again and just just be active and i think also when something's happening whatever it is good bad whatever it inspires words yeah and i can't wait so i, I think that, yeah it will you'll get a chance for it yeah to, yeah like come out and fingers uh, crossed yeah <laughs> and was what were you going to do before the shutdown has something stopped yeah i was i was rehearsing a pl- uh, musical uh, and then um we had five weeks rehearsal, went up to Manchester to, to open. We did two previews. Second preview, we, well, both previews went fantastic. Got called on a Monday, got to get back home. So we were gutted. And you know we nothing. No one knows anything. <clears throat> no one knew when, if it was going to come back, if it wasn't. So I'm hoping the show that I was doing comes back because yeah, it's course. too good. Cameron McIntosh has made an announcement today. That he doesn't think theatre is going to come back till next year. It's one person's opinion. I don't know about you, but have you found that people have become very opinionated and they know they know nothing? Yeah. The, they're it, not it, medical uh, doctors or no. they have no knowledge, but I'm, they're just I'm bad. hearing everything, Jackie. I'm hearing we're gonna there's gonna be panto this year, then I've heard someone saying it's not gonna be panto, then I've heard the fit is gonna open next month and beginning of the summer. So who knows? Our, our, our lives are in the governments and, and the, uh, you know, in, you yeah. know, like government's hands. Have you done Panto? I've done about 10. I love Panto. I do. L- let me just quickly explain for people not in England what Panto is. So Panto is a, normally a kid's story, all with adults. And uh, and an adult, it's quite often it's there's an adult side to it where the children don't understand and everybody joins in. Yes. So yeah, Americans have no idea what panto is. No, they don't. I love it. I love it. Do you, it. Do you like playing the baddie or what? What do you yes, like? Yes, I played the baddie the last four years, and prior to that, I enjoyed panto, but now I love it because there's nothing best than getting booed and scaring the kids, and <laughs> uh, it's brilliant. It's fantastic. And have you got a show that you would love to do? Uh, or a part? Yeah, I mean, for me. A part that I was very, very close to getting uh, was in a show called Jersey Boys. Um, <laughs> I went up for Tommy DeVito. Actually, David David got me the, the, the audition and he came to see my audition. Ask him tomorrow. Ask him tomorrow when you're in. For David's my agent. We both uh, got no. people so we know. Yeah. When you speak to him, just say, how was that in his first audition for Jersey Boys? I've never seen him. Speechless. He was like that. You know, no, it's good. It's good or bad. <laughs> no, it's good. That's what I'm saying. He, he, he didn't know what else to say. Because normally he's like, "Hello, son. You know, you know, done well." And that's so, that's so <laughs> funny. You sound just like him. <laughs> <laughs> I've nearly won. I've nearly won Julia up before by doing his voice. That's so funny. Oh, no. I, I wa- watched uh, last night. I'm a big RuPaul's Drag Race fan. Right, okay. And, and somebody told me yesterday that um, they're doing a celebrity version. So I went on Netflix. They are. Oh, they're doing a celebrity version, but in America. Oh, it's going to be America. And they, have you ever watched it? Um, I've dipped in and out of it. I'll be honest with you. Oh, yeah, it's well, fun, isn't it? It's a bit yeah, fun. It's, they do this um, uh, one episode where people are impersonating people. So I'm just listening to you. I can hear where that impersonation comes from because that was spot on. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank do you, you do anyone else? I used to do loads, Jackie, but over the thing it won't sound as good. When I'm when I'm when I'm close to close to get, I'll do it. Yeah. I'll do some stuff. But I've watched um, I've watched some great stuff on Netflix. I've watched The Stranger, brilliant. Um, I've watched Safe. Have you seen Safe? No, I've got a list of things to watch. Oh, super. I love a British drama. Well, then you need to go on Amazon Prime and watch mine. Is that is it a drama or is it a doc? No, no, like it's a doc. Like um, documentary. It's about me investigating murder in Las Vegas. I took a film crew out with me and I had a go. I wanted to find out the easiest way to kill someone and get rid of a body. So 
so that's what I was investigating. So I shoot guns. I uh, try and dig a grave in the desert. Uh, bow and arrow. I have a go at all different things to try and kill. <laughs> that's amazing. Have you always been obs- uh, uh, interested in that? No. I started off with kids books because I, you know, when you first start, to write, start writing, people say write about what you know. So what I know is pushy parents and stage school yes, kids. That's yeah. what I know. So my first set of books was called The Amazing Adventures of Star. She's 11 year old. She's got a pushy mother and she's an, uh, becomes a star and, uh, and, a, and a bit of a detective. So that that was my series of five books, but because I know the world of being on set, because most of my uh, time was being on location with kids. So I'd be chaperoning and, you know, so I've done been on film set all my life so that it was natural to write about, you know, what I know. Amazing. So did you have a pushy mum? Or was no, she never. Supportive? Never pushy. My mum was never pushy. I used to push her. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So you were determined. Only because I knew I knew my I knew I had something. I don't know what it was, but I did have something. And the thing about me was I, I wasn't good academically, but teachers liked me because I used to do impressions of them and make the class laugh. So I was I was good for that. Do you know what I mean? So but in, if there was a uh, a song to be sung at a school, choir or play or musical. I would be the one to represent the school. So it worked both ways, really. Do you know what I mean? They help, they scratch my back and I'll scratch theirs. So, but mum, mum was never pushy. Never. I mean, we used to just laugh. We used to see this pushy mum. We used to see Oh, her. they are. They're still oh, there. They're the best. They're the best. Me, and, me, 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 and they've me, got me, what me. I call chocolate box kids. So the kids are all, you know, made up and yeah. hair and whatever. And Yeah, I remember the girls, uh, you know, I was a teenager, so I was, what, 13? So the girls in my class used to come in, doled up, and Sharon used to say, why are you all doled up? Go back home and come back. You know, things like that. And Because that's, that's you got, you got to be natural. you got to show your, your, your inner soul of, of what, you, what you're good at. How, when Blue was at his highest, yeah. how did you deal with paparazzi, girls that were screaming, and kind of that <laughs> side of it? Was it, was it, you took it with a, a smile. How did you always, deal with it? Always with a smile, Jackie, because, you know, paparazzis and people like that. Yes, you know, some people say that they they, they invade your sp- privacy, and I get that. But they've got bills to pay. So mm. you're going to... I used to be so friendly to them that they were like, what are you doing? Oh, hello, mate, you're all right. Do you want a drink? Do you want that? Do you know what I mean? So... They liked me because I was not like that. Do you know what I mean? They wanted me to get annoyed with them. But because I'm, I'm yeah. not that type of bloke, they didn't know how to take me. So after a while, they just got people, oh, he's too nice him. He's not going to do anything. So that's why not many people took a lot of interest. Did you write any of the songs that Blue sung? Oh. Yeah, yeah, we wrote most of albums. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, did yeah. you? How brilliant. Yeah. yeah. So... That's one thing that we always said we want to record and, and write our own stuff. That's so important, isn't it? It's what I yeah. recommend. I kind of left uh, teaching for a while, went into the music business, and I had a girl band that I managed. Wow. We were there the same time as you because I think you were doing festivals. Didn't you go and do all the music festivals? We did loads, Jackie. Like and me. I was behind you with these girls doing all the music festivals. What were they called? Nexus. Who was in it? Uh, there were three girls, Holly, Anna, and Frankie, three of them. But um, didn't you do the circuit with the um, Butlin circuit as well? No. The big arenas. Oh, we did. I thought you were doing those. They were no, we, we used to start our tour in Minehead. Yeah. But we never did the touring of Butlins. All right. Maybe that was it, Minehead. We came in after you. Right. Yeah. Got you. Uh, so we did the... Um, the final tour of Atomic Kitten. Wow. We opened for them. Yeah, so it was fun. And But but being in the studio was where I learned how to edit film. Because it's no different from editing music, no, edit no. film. Yeah, yeah. Amazing what voice. They? they wrote all their stuff themselves as and well. It just didn't, what happened? They just lost the interest? Or? Okay, no. 
uh, we were competing. I think exactly the same as what you just said. You got to a point where the the girl bands, boy bands were just moving for the new stuff that was coming in. And I think we were probably there at that time as well. So I totally yeah. understand. Yeah. Crazy. Well, thank you so much for our chat. Loved every minute I loved of it. it. I, I wish it. you all the luck in the world. Thank I'm you, just, Jackie. Um, I'm going to ask David tomorrow. Ask him. What he said. And I'm going to tell him that was the best <laughs> David voice I've ever heard. Because it was him. Honestly. And I'll tell you what, my viewers, when they listen to that episode, they're going to they're gonna say, yeah, you're right. I, but, but I bet David starts speaking really posh tomorrow. He will. He he, be... Till I say something and he'll change. Yeah. He'll start. No, yeah. he'll, be like, he'll be like, now, the thing is, Jackie, um, <laughs> when you uh, when you go in the business and uh, it's um, it's really hard, you know, and uh, I <laughs> think I think that I can. I could prove to someone the way that I'm like, shut up, David. You don't speak. Like that. <laughs> but the thing is, is that that was spot on. Absolutely. I'm going to play it to him. He'll just have fun. Please. Please. Thanks. I will. Thanks, Dan. <laughs> it was lovely. Lots of love, Jackie. See you, my darling. Bye. 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 Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Your honor, please, gotta believe what I say. What I will tell happened just the other day.